prison judges next? Yes. Um, uh, can I talk? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to break my usual philosophy tonight, um, which is uh, never let the truth get in the way of a good theatrical bit. Um, but tonight I'm actually going to tell the truth. <laughs> and so it, it may not make for good theater, but uh, Rocco has somehow inspired me. I want to dedicate this performance um, to Rocco, um, this following piece, The Prison and Dirges, and also to uh, Randy and to friends of the Island Academy and to Joey and Linda, and you all know who you are. And through all these people, I've learned something about the prison population in this country, uh, a forgotten group of people. Um, and I was going to say some cynical things about it tonight and some things I'd learned and, and that sort of thing. But uh, instead, I got this letter um, this week, and I wanted to read it, though I'm going to change the names of all the people in it except for myself, just to protect their anonymity. Um, and uh, uh, somebody once said something like, there are five white people in the entire prison system in America. And I guess that's a slight <laughs> exaggeration, right, Rocco? But um, uh, <laughs> if there are five people, one of the five is my nephew. And um, he's been in and out of the prison system, mostly in, in the last five or six years. But uh, I wanted to read a letter I got from him this week, which is interesting that it coincides with Rocco, come here. <sighs> Dear Aunt Kathy, sorry it took me a while to write you back, but I've uh, been really tied up with my program. I am now a month into it, and it's going really well. I almost have 120 days clean. That is the most time I've had, besides the time I spent in prison. The days seem to go by really fast. Every day I have classes, which teach us about our ways of thinking and how that's got us where we are today. I guess I picked the best one for me because it has a really good success rate. The best part about me coming to this program is that I have a real uh, chance to get my life back in order. Uh, Grandpa John wrote me a week ago and I can't think of the last time I talked to him on good terms. So I'm slowly starting to get good feelings about what I'm doing. I think it was the best decision I could have made at this point in my life. Amanda, his sister, uh, even comes to visit me, so that is a step forward for us. Mom comes every week, and I love how all this makes me feel. Well, I thought I would write you a letter and let you know what's going on with me these days. I hope to hear from you soon. Love, Jimmy. This first story is about a young white male. I was born in 1971, and the youngest in my family I have an older brother and two older sisters. The first thing I can remember is a time when I was eight years old and my best friend and I built a clubhouse. I still find myself laughing when the first hard rain came and the clubhouse fell down. The next incident that I remember is a time when I was 12 and my mother took me to see the Broadway play Cats. I loved it so much, it was so interesting and amazing how they did the show. As I grew older, I found myself not, in one, not wanting to do much of anything. I would just sit around and watch everyone else do things with their fathers, like fishing, hunting, and playing catch. My father left when I was four. I still find myself missing him. When I started high school, I went to look for a part-time job. I got a job at a supermarket. I worked the cash register. I worked there for two years until one day the manager came up to me and asked if I wanted a caddy for him this summer. I accepted a job. It was fun. I even learned to play the game 
as a caddy. After a while, we became good friends. We went fishing and skiing. We had a lot of fun. He was like a father to me. For once in my life, I felt good about myself. Then one night, he got drunk and raped me. It was the most horrible thing that I ever experienced in my life. And what, what upsets me the most is, he never got in any trouble for what he did. He bought his way out of it all. Then my life went downhill. I got myself mixed up with drugs and tried to commit suicide several times. I went to a psychologist that gave me an antidepressant. That drug messed my life up more. It made me have violent mood swings and more suicidal. I started messing with the wrong crowd and ended up in prison. I now seek my degree in social services. Maybe when I get out, I can help the young kids out there messing with lives and with drugs. These have been some of my best and most hidden memories. I'm glad that's all they are, is memories. Myself, prior to my incarceration and college education while incarcerated, I had this exact same mentality. It's all quite simple. I'm a product of my environment. I grew up dirt poor in one of the worst neighborhoods. I was the oldest of two boys and one girl. Since we had no, no father, I had to assume the father role. My mother was never home, so I had to look after my sister and brother. The only reason I didn't get locked up at an early age is because I was a good athlete and I played a lot of sports. At the age of 16, I started selling drugs. Where I'm from, if you soft, you lost. The only way to get on top is to rule with force. With the drug selling came drug usage. Smoking marijuana, whatever, was an everyday thing. 